Recent developments in genetic science indicate that as much as 74% of the world's population is descended from a common root that can be traced back to the region of Mongolia. As the common ancestors migrated, this original familial source was to eventually populate virtually every continent, including the Americas, Asia, Europe, Eurasia, the Middle East, and even Africa and Oceania. What the Mongolian People's Federation for World Peace is doing is to show that there is a common ancestry that we all share, whether we are black, whether we are uh, white, Caucasian so-called, or, or whether we are Middle Eastern or Latin American, that there is, there is a, a blood lineage connection. I think the Mongolian People Federation is, is a, really a genius move. Not, I don't say it as a move, it's almost a, a destiny that uh, because in this age of convergence people are looking for some way that they can inter interact with each other, keep what is precious to them, but also find the common language and the common good. We have a fundamental root embodying a huge percentage of humankind, not just in Asia, but actually having s spread throughout the world, even into the Western Hemisphere and so forth. And, uh, uh, and that these are not merely uh, mythologies, but rather there's a great deal of uh, scientific evidence that anthropologically and genetically and so forth that these commonalities are there. More than two-thirds of the world population has some link to Mongolian lineage. One significant indicator of this linkage is the so-called Mongolian spot or birthmark. I am very happy that uh, uh, I born Mongolian and I, I, I born with blue spot. I myself, I have it and many in my family has it. We didn't know that that was, has to do with anything with Mongolia. Our babies are born with that spot and the mothers always look for that besides counting the fingers and the toes. All people back home, they all have this mark. Every child had this mark. The idea that up to 74% of the world's population have in some way been touched by the Mongolian race and uh, you know, are considered people of the Mongolian spot, that is definitely new for many people. I'm not sure that I had one when I was born. I actually was born in Ireland and I'm not sure that the Celts <laughs> have the Mongolian spot. I'm from European ancestry. I think I'm not included in the Mongolian bloodline. Anyway, at least my children belong to the Mongolian people and they did have the spot to prove it. One woman from China was talking to me in utter astonishment that you know, she had the spot when she was born and her family did and then she hadn't really thought about how this might connect her to someone in Latin America or to someone in the Pacific Islands. So it's a new idea, it's an interesting idea that you have relatives around the world that you never knew about. When I met the Mongolian people, it was like I was looking at the face of our grandpas and grandmas. When I feel their warmth and their heart, it's very much like our own traditional people. I had no doubts in my mind, you know, that the Mongolian people, that we are related to these people. There's a lot of similarities with us and the Mongolian people and the African people. I mean, we're all the same, you know, and I, and I honestly believe that. The language, the way we live, the way we look after our children, the way we look after our parents, and the way we appoint leaders of our tribe. I found Mongolia is really a very beautiful country. The people I heard today from a Bolivian. He comes from an Aymara culture. Aymara culture, as, as far as I know, is about 7,000 year culture. And uh, this man was very surprised when he heard the translation of, of a Mongolian language. And he thought that he was here in Aymara. He was listening to my translation in Mongolian and he all the time was very curious, what language is this? So he asked me and he said that our native language is really similar to this language. So he found in, 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 even in the language, the Mongolian language, some similarities to a language that had been spoken in, in the highlands of Bolivia for the last 7,000 years. When we wake up in the morning, we say, good morning, Grandpa Sun. 
at night. When we say goodbye to Grandpa Sun, we welcome Grandpa Moon. And we say, Grandpa Moon, thank you very much for coming out. Without the sun, nothing grows in creation. Without the moon, nothing rests. Without the sun and the moon, everything dies. Mangalians firmly believe in heaven. Heaven is for us a God. So we respect heaven and pray to heaven and the blue sky and eternal heaven. We wake up in prayer, we talk in prayer, we talk to the wind, we talk, talk to the rain, and you talk to creation. We speak to the four directions, speaking to the Creator, speaking to animals, and how the healing comes from deep into the spirit of Mother Earth. The blue sky and eternal heaven is the most precious and was most honorable uh, thing for us. How can somebody so far away speak of the same things, have the same com common thinking of Mother Earth? The root values of Mongolian peoples are harmony, balance, filial piety, respect for nature, respect for elders and ancestors, including recognition of the spiritual world. The Asian cultures have a very strong and deep root, and the values that they tend to espouse are close family ties, strong parent-child bonds. And usually their children cares, care about their parents. They never quit. Even their parents get old, they never take them to the elderly house. And this is exactly what we do in our culture. We look after our mothers, we look after our grandfathers, we look after our young people, and we look after our extended family, our friends. Ecuadorians, uh, when kids would leave their home, the tradition was you would bow on one knee and get the blessing from your parents. The values of the Mongolian people are connected with the values of tribes, all over the world, tribal, clans, uh, elder councils, uh, the traditions of parents and children, the, par the traditions of um, uh, how, how children look at, the, at those in the position of authority. Asian societies also place greater importance on vertical relationships, parent-child, teacher-student, employer-employee, in Korea, even age is very important. An older brother is automatically respected by younger ones. Older classmates are respected by their juniors. This is considered natural and part of the normal social order. In our country, we live as extended families. And we never mean the father, mother, son and daughter. We mean the family, uncles, aunties, cousins. It goes sometimes even up to the fifth generation. So you have the sense of Elders, grandparents being the past, parents being the present, and children are the future. So you have past, present, and future all in one family. We say that it takes a tribe to raise a child. And the connection to one another is very deep. From the time that we go somewhere, when people used to go to a place, even before they used to go hunting, there was always somebody to say, Come back, we'll wait for you. When the people will be coming back, we'll be saying, hello, welcome back. It's good to see you again. And it makes us feel good in our heart, knowing that somebody's there waiting for you to greet you back. Now we're beginning to see that many of those traditions coincide in their value, emphasis on extended family, uh, respect for nature. Uh, and in this world, in modernized world, it's just seems to be bulldozing over everything. Even people in, uh, I can say, in the developed world are looking, well, what is our original value and root? And I think the indigenous people have a lot to say about that. And, and a lot of that can be traced back to, to the Mongolian uh, heritage. Why did certain cultural traditions last over centuries? For example, in the Pacific Islands and in much of Asia, why do these cultural traditions endure? It's because there's something deeply valuable within them.